Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice quartic equation. We have x to the fourth plus 16x equals 12, and we're going to be solving for x. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and put everything on the same side. Subtract 12. And then, this is a quartic, but it's missing a lot of terms. There's no x cubed, there's no x squared. So that's good. Let's go ahead and set it equal to the product of two quadratics. And so let's try to write it as x squared plus ax plus b. That's going to be one of the factors. And since we don't have x cubed, we can actually write the second factor as x squared minus ax. Notice that when we multiply x squared and ax together, we get two opposing terms. They cancel out. And the constant term, for the constant term, I can use as c, but I want to limit the number of variables, so let's use minus 12 over b, because the only constant that is going to come from the product of constants. Make sense? So when I multiply these two things, I'm getting negative 12, which is good. Awesome. So we only have two variables, a and b. Let's try to solve for them. Distribute completely on the right-hand side. You get x to the fourth, and I'm not going to worry about this because this is going to be negative ax cubed and positive ax cubed, so they're going to cancel out. So continue with everything else. You're going to get x squared times negative 12 over b, negative 12 over b x squared. And then we're going to distribute to ax minus a squared x squared minus 12a over b x. And then finally, we have the b, which we need to distribute completely. And when we do, we're going to get bx squared minus abx, and then finally minus 12. But of course, minus 12 is just going to cancel out, but let's go ahead and put the like terms together. So we have x to the fourth. Like I said earlier, there's no x cubed. So the coefficient of x squared is going to be b minus 12 over b minus a squared. The, those are all the x squared terms, this one, this one, and this one. And then finally, the x term is going to be minus 12a over b plus ab, because I took out a minus sign, minus 12. And this is equal to x to the fourth plus 16x minus 12. So this means we have the constant term equal to the constant term, so on and so forth. This is not going to really help us, but let's go ahead and focus on the other terms, such as the coefficient of x squared is supposed to be 0 because there is no x squared here, right? And the coefficient of x, I forgot to put the x here, is going to be this one with a negative sign in front of it. But I have a 16, so this should be negative 16. So we get a system of equations. Let's go ahead and write it down. b minus 12 over b minus a squared is equal to 0. And 12a over b plus ab is equal to negative 16. So that's the system we need to solve. And to be able to solve the system, we could probably isolate one of the variables in terms of the other and then substitute and solve for the other variable. Well, if I look at the first equation, they're both quadratic. Uh, so let's go ahead and focus on the second one first. 12a plus ab squared is equal to negative 16b, if I multiply both sides by b. And then... I can go ahead and actually isolate a here. So let's take out an a, 12 plus b squared equals negative 16b. And then from here, a can be written as negative 16b divided by b squared plus 12. That's the value of a. And now we can go ahead and plug it into the first equation. We have b minus 12 over b equals a squared, right, from the first equation. Let's go ahead and plug in this for a. So b squared minus 12 all over b equals a squared, which is 256 b squared, divided by b squared plus 16 quantity squared. So looks like this is going to give us b to the fourth, and then b to the second, and b to the third. So most probably we're going to end up with a quintic equation, or even a hexic equation, right? So it's going to be a little hexic and hectic, but you can definitely proceed and find solutions, hoping that uh, b is going to be rational or integer, so on and so forth. Okay, but that's pretty much the first method. Actually, I like the second method better because this is something actually I learned from one of my viewers, uh, a great contributor, Nadia Fan. Thank you for the method. 
And for this method, we're actually going to use, is that Ferrari's method? I, I believe that's what it's called. So let's go ahead and rewrite our equation. We have x to the fourth plus 16x is equal to 12, okay? x to the fourth plus 16x equals 12. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and isolate the x to the fourth. So write this as negative 16x plus 12. And then we're gonna use mathematic, okay? We're gonna add something to both sides, two terms, to make the left-hand side a perfect square. And that's gonna be the following. We're gonna add 2k, we're gonna add 2k x squared plus k squared to this. Basically what happens on the left-hand side is we're getting a perfect square, x squared plus k quantity squared, makes sense? But that's also nice because that's going to produce a quadratic on the right hand side. That's why we need to add something like this. And when we add that, we're going to get 2k x squared minus 16x plus 12 plus k squared. I just added that term, I mean these two terms on both sides. And now we're balanced. So this is going to equal, and we can kind of think about this as a quadratic. Maybe I can write the k squared first, no big deal, but I like writing it that way. So we have a perfect square on the left-hand side. We should also have a perfect square on the right-hand side. I mean, on the left-hand side, we have a perfect square. Same thing should happen on the right-hand side. But how do you make a quadratic a perfect square? The discriminant delta should be equal to zero. So let's go ahead and find discriminant from here. The discriminant is going to be b squared, 256 delta, minus 4ac, four times 2k times k squared plus 12, and that's supposed to equal zero. From here, we can do a lot of simplifications, like for example, this is 8k multiplied by k squared. I don't know why it's notability what likes to act up today. 8k multiplied by k squared plus 12 is equal to 256. We can actually divide both sides by eight. If you divide 256 by eight, I think you're gonna get 32, right? And then from here, we kind of get, but since we are expecting or we're hoping that k is going to be an integer or rational, we can kind of guess and check. I mean, think about some factors of 32. If k is equal to 2, for example, this is going to be 4 plus 12, 16. So k equals 2 is actually going to work. So that's nice. It was easier to find, but we could still solve this cubic to find it. Maybe rational root theorem or something like that. But what happens is if k is equal to 2, then we get something like this. Hey, no, Bill, stop acting it up. X squared plus two, are you serious? X squared, I don't think it's about battery because the, the pen has, uh, or the pencil has 100% battery. Anyways, X squared plus K squared, and then equals 2K, which is gonna be four X squared, minus 16X plus K squared is four plus 12, that's gonna be 16. Obviously, you can write this as what? 2x minus 4 quantity squared and this will be x squared plus x squared plus 2 squared okay it's really weird okay so we get that now we have two perfect squares that are equal to each other you can definitely turn this into a difference of two squares or you can actually consider the following if a squared is equal to b squared then we can safely say that a is equal to b and a is equal to negative b, okay? So from here, we get the two cases. x squared plus 2 is equal to 2x minus 4, and x squared plus 2 is the opposite of 2x minus 4, which is negative 2x plus 4. From here, we get two quadratics, x squared minus 2x plus 6 equals 0, and x squared plus 2x minus 2 equals 0. Obviously, this one has no real solutions. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4 minus 24. That's going to be a negative 20. That's going to be 20 square root of 20i. Divide by 2. And then the second one is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4 plus 8, which is 12. And it's going to be the square root of 12 divided by 2. Now, consider the fact that this is 2 root 5. So we can kind of write this as 1 plus minus root 5i and we can write these as negative one plus minus root three. Make sense? So there are four solutions, two of them are not real. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at the results and then we'll finish up with that. And yes, this is a really nice graph. Notice that even though it's a cortic, it's, it kind of intersects the horizontal line at two points. Those are the real solutions. And here's all the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.